Hello, I'm Buki Adebayo, and I'm the product lead for HashiCorp's Waypoint. I've talked to dozens of platform teams and learned how many of them create delightful developer experiences and gain widespread adoption across their organizations. In this video, I will share what some of the most successful teams do. Previously, Armand Dadgar, the CTO of HashiCorp, described the evolution of the platform team and what problems they solve. In that video, he talked about the path that many organizations take on their cloud adoption journey. They start by adopting cloud technologies in an ad hoc way across their organizations. Then they create standards that ensure that application teams are following the most secure and compliant practices. And finally, organizations scale these standards across application teams. To do this effectively, Armand talked about how platform teams are formed to be responsible for standardizing and scaling the organization's approach to cloud adoption. Their goal is to manage cost, security, and compliance in a sensible way. However, in order to truly scale these standards and guardrails, platform teams need developers to adopt their tooling. And at its core, this is about creating a developer experience that fits the needs of internal developers. Typically, developers just want to deploy their code. So it's imperative that platform teams create developer experiences that enable a simple deploy experience. But how do platform teams build a delightful developer experience to abstract away these details? And how can you do the same? They typically follow a three-phase process. Phase one, build your golden paths. The goal is to codify the cost-effective, secure, and compliant ways of deploying and releasing an application. There are often different paths depending on the type of application or the underlying infrastructure. So the platform team needs to identify these paths and codify these standards in a repeatable way. Phase two, streamline your developer experience. The goal here is to create a streamlined, easy process for internal developers to follow in order to create, deploy, and manage applications based on the golden paths in phase one. Phase three is about the systematic maintenance and management of application. The goal here is to systematically ensure applications remain cost-effective, secure, and compliant. Now I will dive into what each phase looks like and the challenges you may encounter in trying to implement this in your organization. As I mentioned, phase one is about building your golden paths. To start, you'll want to survey the internal developer population to understand the current tooling the application teams are using. And you might discover that there are multiple ways teams are doing the same thing. For example, there may be a dozen different ways teams are deploying to Kubernetes. Concurrently, you will need to work with folks responsible for security, finance, and compliance to understand the key requirements for all applications. Using this information, you can identify the few golden paths you want applications to follow. For example, you might have a golden path for Java applications, Go services, or Python data services. For each golden path, you'll need to include a template repo to codify the pre-production parts of the golden path. So you'll have a template GitHub repo with the CI configurations that define any static code analysis, how the artifact will be built, and where to push the artifact once it's built. And then you may leverage a tool like Terraform to define the infrastructure an app will need for networking, security, observability, and runtime. In this example, you might choose GitHub as your VCS and define a template Git repo with already pre-configured GitHub actions with ECR as the artifact registry, GitHub code scanning and secret scanning automatically enabled. And because I'm a HashiCorp employee, in this hypothetical example, you create a Terraform module that provisions the registry for the application, a Nomad cluster for runtime, a console service for networking, a vault namespace for secret and certificate management, and provisions of VPC for the application. But you could pick any tool that works in your organization. The key here is to use tools that many developers are already familiar with and enable you to maintain a cost-effective, secure, and compliant application by default. Phase two is streamlining your developer experience. Many people talk about building a Heroku-like experience for their developers. There are two key areas to streamline application creation, and app deployment and troubleshooting. For app creation, the goal is 
that a developer can come to your self-service platform and within minutes be able to deploy a functional Hello World application and do anything they need relatively easily without needing a lot of assistance. This doesn't have to be complex. It can be as simple as a form, a wiki, or a UI to guide application developers through the process of creating a new application. In addition to creating a self-service application workflow, you also need to create a seamless experiences for deploys and releases, as well as debugging production issues. Oftentimes, you can use a Git-based process for deployment. You can create a process where deployment is triggered by a pull request and the templatized repo as part of the golden path has already configured this. The key here is to leverage tools and workflows that application developers are already familiar with. So the app team often already uses a Git-based process for committing and reviewing code. So leveraging a similar CLI experience for applications just makes sense. Ultimately, this ends up being a collaborative process where you may need to initially provide deep support to the application developers that are creating new application. This is often an iterative journey where you create a process, get feedback from internal developers, and iterate based on that feedback. I know there's been some talk on social media that DevOps is dead. But rather than dead, it has evolved to centralizing more of the knowledge in the platform team. This means you can adopt more product management principles like rapid iteration of the platform instead of directly supporting individual teams. So rather than thinking of this as a phase, that has an ending, I would more likely describe it as a continuous improvement process. Phase three is the ongoing maintenance and management of the portfolio of applications and infrastructure. A key goal here is to manage cost, security, and compliance at scale. Creating golden paths for bootstrapping new applications is one aspect of it, but the other is helping to ensure that the portfolio of applications remains cost-effective, secure, and compliant over time. You may want to ask yourself questions like, are we using this database effectively? Or could we reduce artifact retention to co cut cost? Or simply, how many teams are actually using this cluster right now? To answer these kinds of questions, you need to create a catalog of all the applications in your organization. And this information is also useful for folks around the team, including the internal developers themselves. Having a source of truth helps application developers know which team owns which services, and folks around the organizations can easily find information like SLOs, dependent resources, team ownership. Also, you may need to make simple upgrades to the infrastructure and dependencies while ensuring application uptime. And having this source of truth allows you to more easily do this. I know I just made this all seem so easy, but now I wanna talk about the challenges with the process I just outlined. The challenge today is that golden paths are strung together with scripts and homegrown solutions that require time and effort to create and maintain. These scripts often provide the glue between other services that are on the surface unrelated, but required as inputs and outputs for the full effort of maintaining an application. These teams start by gluing things together with scripts, but as complexity grows, maintaining these scripts becomes more and more difficult. It also requires specific domain knowledge that only a few folk on the team may have. This makes it difficult when a, a process needs to change or a team members don't have the confidence or assurance that modifying the bash scripts will keep the process working as it did before. And in larger organizations, each one of these boxes might have a different team responsible for it. So the developer productivity team might be responsible for setting up the template repos and continuous integration. The infrastructure team is responsible for provisioning the infrastructure. The networking team is responsible for networking and so on and so forth. As a result, creating a cohesive golden path then becomes a problem spanning dozens of teams and requires a collaborative effort of navigating organizational complexity. Building a truly seamless developer experience over these golden paths is time consuming, it requires investments in UI, CLI, and chat up experiences to enable workflows that scale to the entire organization and can adapt to different teams' workflows. And most teams ship the first version of the developer experience and are stuck in firefighting mode and don't get to iterate on it. 
They are struggling to support the developers as they create, deploy, and operate their application and don't even get to phase three of systematically managing applications. Ultimately, achieving a true seamless yet powerful developer experience takes time and investment. It takes many organizations years to build out the standard guardrails, a seamless developer experience, and a shared catalog. So if you're struggling to build your seamless developer experience in your organization, you're not alone and it takes time. But hopefully this has given you a guide to get started. And if you're interested in learning more, check out the resources below.